open invitation to the residents of the sea. Three years ago, a pier was built off the town of Sydney on Vancouver Island. And along with the pier, Sydney also built a reef. But a reef needs to attract some residents if it hopes to live and grow. People of Sydney hoped that if they built it, life would come. This is a reef ball, or rather, a miniature version of something that is in reality about this big. There are 270 of these down either side of the Sydney Pier. If you're a fish or a crab going by, you're supposed to look at this and say, yes, that's exactly where I want to live. The ball is made of a special cement, and it's got a textured surface so that, oh, things like barnacles and sponges have a really good place to get a toehold. The reef balls have been in place 10 meters below the surface for close to three years. Changes on the reef have been documented by 30 divers, volunteers trained by biologists to walk the beach, so to speak, every couple of weeks. 15-year-old Adam has been monitoring the reef with diving instructor Dad. He explains why he does this on his own time. It's just fun to go out there and dive, and then uh, we can help the community while diving all the better. <laughs> Armed with clipboards and a specimen list on waterproof paper, divers follow a research protocol designed by scientists at the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. They're tasked to observe and identify up to 85 different plants and animals living on or near the reef falls. To ensure consistency, all divers follow the same route underwater. The route's marked by a rope attached to a series of balls. Reef falls are not new technology. They've been installed in some 500 locations, but all previous applications have been in tropical water. The purpose has been to establish or repair damaged coral reefs. The Sydney Reef Falls are the first in temperate water. So the question is, will a Florida-style fish condo work in the Pacific Northwest? An apparatus on the reef measures and stores details on temperature, salinity, and current speed. Every three months, the data is retrieved and added to the data bank. And biologist Jim Cosgrove records the reef on video. With his underwater camera and its antennae-like lights, Jim has been photographing the reef site since shortly after its installation. Why all this attention to a heap of hollow cement igloos? It's not very often that scientists get an opportunity to study a completely uh, new structure that's being put in the water. Uh, much of what we see and how reefs evolve uh, is, is guesswork because, of course, most of the reefs we look at are mature already. So the opportunity uh, when an artificial reef such as a, a shipwreck or in this case these reef balls that are designed specifically uh, to provide habitat for marine creatures, uh, it just provides a unique opportunity for a scientist to be able to uh, document the settlement patterns right from known day one. The reef balls provide opportunity or home sites, nothing more. No inducement, no lures. Would plants and animals find their way to the new structure? How fast or how slow? And would they stay? The first winter was slow. All the balls were in, several hundred of them, all covered with red algae. It looked like a bunch of little bald-headed men with red hair sitting on the bottom, and not much more than that. Good news came in the summer. With increased sunlight, plants quickly smothered the naked balls in a lush underwater forest. The tangled algae attracted animals that liked to dash for cover, like this hairy crab, and rockfish, and perch. A few sea stars moseyed over and stayed, but only for the summer. When the seaweed disappeared, they did too. Their cover was blown. Just like us, a neighborhood has to be more than housing. You have to be able to earn a living. And in the underwater world, that means finding something to eat. The story of who eats what is an important part of life in early Reefville. On a dive in early September, Jim's camera records violence in the neighborhood. Curious to see what a large sunflower sea star was eating, 
Jim turns it over, and there in the center is the predator's flaccid stomach, extruded and ready to cannibalize a younger colleague. The youngster, unaware of its brief reprieve, moves back into the arms of the aggressor with its hundreds of tube feet searching, tasting, reaching for its interrupted meal. After a tussle, just as the large sea star rights itself, the youngster somersaults out of the way and escapes as fast as its tube feet can carry it. By the second summer, the growth is obvious. You can't see the balls anymore. Even the rope is covered. And while the seasonal die-off of algae in the fall marks the coming of winter, for the divers, it's a kind of early Christmas present. With the seaweed wrapper removed, the understory is visible and full of surprises. At last, they can see what new organisms have been quietly growing underneath. What at first looks like stucco is a healthy collection of barnacles, calcareous tube worms, and sponges. And there are anemones and more crabs. Now in the third year, there is enough variety of plants and animals so that the plant eaters, the grazers, and the hunters can make a full-time living on the reef. Over half the species on the original list have been recorded, and Jim has close to three years of videotape, including today. So how was it today? It was beautiful. Really? Uh, the reef is just absolutely covered. Uh, it's almost impossible to see the balls now. you really got to dig down to get to see them. They're just covered in uh, kelp. There's lots of fish. Uh, there's lots of uh, crabs. So it's becoming a very mature reef. Other species were expected, but haven't come yet. And one high-profile visitor has given the reef ball community a pass the giant Pacific octopus, which happens to be Jim's specialty. We know that uh, there's been one here because we find what, what we call snacking spots, uh, where it's stopped and eaten uh, a crab, and because of the way the crab and its shell are taken apart and cleaned out, we know it's an octopus. Um, it's probably coming over from the natural reef at night uh, and just uh, shopping here to get a few crabs for, for uh, breakfast in the morning and then going home. Why didn't he or she move in? Perhaps the ball openings were too large, the Florida-style condo just a bit too airy. Octopus prefer a cozier den. Whatever the reason, it just goes to show, when it comes to housing, even underwater, you can't please them all.